Hallelujah. The word of God says that he inhabits in the praises of his people. It's better to worship him than to do any other thing. I want us to go to the word of God. Uh, first and foremost, I want to take this opportunity to appreciate our Father Apostle for the privilege to read to you the love letter that he wrote. Uh, Apostle, we appreciate you. Uh, I, want, I also want to extend my gratitude to Reverend Mama K. I was thinking about where I was I came. And I'm grateful that uh, Apostle saw things that we didn't see in ourselves. Hallelujah. Can you just Amen. give him a round of applause? Uh, let's celebrate the Luate family. Hallelujah. On Friday, he was teaching us on Christ, our Passover. And he reminded us that Passover signifies the beginning of a new life. That Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. That in this dispensation, there is no need for us to kill or slaughter animals. Looking for the atonement of sin. There is nothing wrong with having pride. Hallelujah. Amen. But not for the atonement of sin. Can you look at your neighbor and say, that syllabus is old-fashioned. Hallelujah. Uh, there's an upgrade. Hallelujah. Amen. The upgrade is the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and he died once. And that was it. If that syllabus was not old, why do you think you have to slaughter the animals every time? Uh, I'll just give you the book of Hebrews chapter 10 so that you go and read it for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Or uh, Leviticus uh, uh, 4, chapter 4, the whole of it. Leviticus chapter 4. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. And Apostle also said something. He said, uh, this is also a season of deception. Because if you read the latter part, you'll see that there was an agenda to hide the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The word of God says that they put some guards to stand there next to the tomb. And they said that uh, they were doing that so that uh, someone does not come and steal the body and then they claim that he has resurrected. And little did they know that actually uh, they were becoming eyewitnesses to show that, listen, we were standing here, there was nobody who came and is not there. Hallelujah. So Amen. because of that, this season is very contested. I, I, I don't want to go to the things that I've read about what is happening around the world uh, or where people went to when they said they are going home. Why on Easter they always go home? Hallelujah. I, I don't want to talk about where they are, what they are doing, but I think you have an idea. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't want to go there because you'll start to feel like I'm talking about you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because someone who does not like to go to Limpopo, but this time around they're like, hey, listen, my girl, I'm going home this weekend. And when you ask them, well, what is it that you're going to do? They just say, no, no, I'm going to see family. Hallelujah. Amen. And then on Saturday when you call, you cannot find them. Hallelujah. Mm. Can I share something that I had yesterday? Uh, 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 brethren, it, it was not my conversation, but I had it. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I'm trusting that God will bless us uh, with a house that is not attached to the other houses. Hallelujah. 
Because when you stay in houses that are attached to other houses, sometimes you hear conversation that you're not supposed to hear. Hallelujah. Amen. So I was there and uh, I heard someone say, no, no, no. Hey, no. Ah, well, yeah, we, we, we went to the grave yesterday. And I know it's not Israel. Hallelujah. They are not talking about the grave of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Someone went somewhere there and they know exactly what they were doing. I don't want to talk about things that I've seen even outside. I, I decided that I was going to take a walk to just go outside. Just somewhere closer here. Something, something was happening. Hallelujah. So I'm saying that this season is very charged. So the message for today is resurrection, resurrection exchange or substitution. On the cross, there was a divine exchange. All the evil that was due to us came on Jesus. That, uh, so that all the good that was on Jesus could come upon us. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ was without sin. Christ was without sin. And he became sin for us. So that the plan that God had for us will be made manifest. Hallelujah. Amen. God arranged the exchange, the exchange so that we'll walk and live. The word of God in the book of John chapter 10, 10, Jesus Christ said, uh, the enemy came to steal, to kill and to destroy, but I've come that you may have life and have it in abundance. Amen. Brethren, I want to submit to you uh, that the enemy uses death to scare us. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, listen, it doesn't matter how much money you have, but you'll see that when you say death, the conversation changes. Mm? Uh, some of us want to have all the machangura so that we don't die early. Hallelujah. If all the billionaires uh, could buy something, would be to buy more time on earth. If all the billionaires could buy something, would be to buy more time on earth. I can see it even uh, by your face. The moment I say death, they're like, are you, are, you, are, you, are you wishing so that we should die now? No. Why are you talking about death? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, I'm just going to put it, don't need, need to go there. Uh, when God gave men instruction that they should not eat the tree that was in the middle of the garden, he told them that uh, it will bring death. So the intention of God was not for men to die. And then the enemy then uh, deceived us. If you read Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 2 to 4, the, the latter part when uh, the enemy was deceiving the woman or the conversation between Satan and the woman, you will see that uh, uh, the enemy only touched the first part. No, God knows that you are going to be like us. But he knew that the trap was to make sure that death is introduced in the world. Me. Uh, that's why in, uh, Genesis 4, you, you have a record of the first death. So you see that it's a trend. Okay, uh, chapter 2. Uh, God said, no, listen, don't eat. You'll bring death. Chapter 3. They get deceived and death was brought into the world. Chapter 4, the first death happened. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want you to see the power of resurrection because that's what Christ came to reverse. Because the enemy knew that, listen, he had a limited time, so he didn't want to go there all by himself. Hallelujah. Amen. The first point is that the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity upon him. Because of our rebellion. This is Jesus Christ. The Lord has laid upon Jesus the iniquity upon him because of our rebellion. 
the reason why I'm quoting this scripture is because in heaven, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, it says that there was a war in heaven. Because someone was in rebellion and he was cast out. And guess what? When he, ca- when he came to earth, he wanted to make men also rebellious to God. Unfortunately, uh, he, he won on that uh, first part. Hallelujah. But God then sent Christ to uh, make sure that he sets us free from the rebellion because uh, his aim is to make sure that we go down with him. Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him iniquity of us all. If you read the book of Ezekiel, the word of God says that iniquity was found in Satan. Iniquity or sin was found in him. There are two things. It was because of uh, pride and also rebellion. So, if we check, our nature is very rebellious. Hallelujah. Rebellious to the ways of God. Rebellious to the word of God. Just try and advise someone. You will hear the answers of who, who do you think you are? Eh? Ah, good, they will tell you where to get off. Uh, especially if you talk about the things of God. Just say, did you go to sell on Tuesday? You're like, ah, what? Oh, man, no. you. <laughs> and then when you say, oh, on Thursday, uh, did you go to brunch? I, I thought you were going home. I thought, I, I thought you were not around. I thought you were not around. Ah, but to me, man, this is too much. Man. We are there on Thursday and then Friday we are on early service. You see, we are rebellious to the ways of God. Mm. Because it's a seed that has been sown. And Christ came so that he deals with that rebellion. One of the most rebellious people are teenagers. Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'm not picking up on you because you are a teenager. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, well, when you see us like this, we were once teenagers. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, when they start to come of age, they know how to answer parents. Eh? Yeah. Uh, when you say do one, two, three, they're like, for what? Eh? Uh, when you say, well, when you get a little bit of instruction, you get open rebellion. It's not even hidden. When you say do one, two, three, they, they, they don't wait when you are. When you have left like during our time, Pastor Michael, they will say it right straight to the parents, or, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Rebellion. Hey, so that, I, I wanted to say South Africans, but I know hey, I met them. It's better if I'm talking about it when I'm in Zim, hallelujah. Or when I'm somewhere uh, in Musina, uh, so that I talk about South Africans uh, when they are not there, hallelujah. Eh, 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 because eh, we excel on the gift of rebellion. I, I, I'm telling you the truth. We, eh, eh, because we're oppressed. And for us to uh, overcome, we have to do it through rebellion. We don't know when to stop. We've got freedom and we have not stopped with the rebellion. I'm, I'm telling you that I know that we don't like to hear this part. Uh, let it be, uh, let, uh, I don't want to mention campuses. Or let's say at a certain university in Pretoria, if there's a strike, if you want to see rebellion, if there's a strike at university, you will see someone who uh, you thought is a, a brother. A shepherd, a man of God, in front there, eh? rebelling. Not only that, I'd swear something to burn something. Life, they, they, they don't even hide. And then we'll, uh, you know, 
uh, congratulate that person and say, ah, I'm not going to say, Hey, let me not say only comrade. Uh, uh, hey. There are so many. Hallelujah. Uh, but uh, I want to show you that we have 30 signs of rebellion. I thought it was only children. Uh, even parents. Uh, you must see them uh, here in Pretoria when there's a strike for workers. Oh, I'm telling you, you will see the dustbin everywhere. Not because of kids. Because of municipal workers, eh? Hi! 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 <laughs> Elderly people. And we have tilted signs of rebellion. Rebellion to instructions. Listen, Christ came so that he deals with that part. Christ came our default response is rebellion when someone asks us to do something. We don't accept it right away. If someone says, do one, two, two, like, for, for what? Hey. Oh, oh, why me? Why, why are you choosing me? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. We just met, I think it's too early for you to ask me to do one, two, three. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, I'm just showing you that we have tilted signs of rebellion. But thanks be to God who has given us Jesus Christ to deal with the rebellion that started in heaven and now we just partook in it without understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the definitions for sin is rebellion. You must check it. Rebellion is part of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus received the full measure of punishment of sin for all and the results of sin. Hallelujah. Number two, Jesus was punished for our transgression and because he was punished, uh, we have received forgiveness. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, it was about forgiveness as well. One of the most difficult things to do is to forgive. Have you ever forgiven someone who is showing no sign of remorse? You have forgiven someone who is still on your case. Eh? Forgiven someone who is still criticizing you. Forgiven someone who is still not taking care of you. One of the most difficult issues that we encounter is unforgiveness because our parents didn't take care of us. Pastor Michael, I've got, uh, you know, because I, uh, I'm a guy and we run male cells, if you talk to men and you dig deep, you'll see some level of anger. Or I had to do things on my own. Nobody took care of me. You'll see it. You even see it on how they treat other, uh, uh, other people as well. Or no, he, he, he didn't take me to university. Whatever, and this person is just coming now at a later stage and they want all the glory. A testimony. I had the same problem. And I was an angry young man. Because at some point, my father was doing very well. Things were so well to a point where uh, when everybody's home, you'll think that they, there was a party because there'll be cars everywhere. Hallelujah. But the cry was that there are other people who are benefiting and when are you live on the cramps? 
mi buta taki khori khuna albat bayno khori ba fitala so fela ona tsila asadir sente and i was very angry mi so sene sing cha kha tsai lirun i could not express it mi kisa khori khu khunta mai kutla an but i attended one service many years back at varsity mi fela kina ka ka tutong ngwe ke san tsikile university i don't know what they were talking about they just said forgive me kha kso khopel khori ba ne ba bua kang fela ba rutile ka buitshwarela and they said you don't have to wait for the you don't have to forgive because that person is there just Uh, or whether you have talked to them you must personally make a decision that i'm forgiving how was one gore o emele motho gore atle mo wena go pema isorelo fela o tshwanetse gore wena o tse tsotse gore wa motshwarela le fanta sa atle mo i remember i just ran forward without understanding me ke go pola gore ke ile kwa pele ke sa tlhaloganye and today i'm grateful that i forgive me go mpeni ke le ba gore ke gone go tshwarela listen jesus christ said i'm not impressed by your gimmicks christ o bolete gore ga ga tlhikilo tere di dirang if you are at the altar pray or lead in worship or you've got a position and there's someone that you have not forgiven he said you have to drop it and go and forgive the person because it's possible to do all these things and not, and still not forgive yeah, one of the most difficult places is church where you have people who don't talk to each other In the house of the Lord. In the presence of God. Yeah, we're not even afraid of talking about other people in the house of the Lord. Brethren, if we to see the WhatsApp messages that are moving here. I, I, I want to submit to you that I suspect uh, that is not us preaching about the resurrection. Unforgiveness. Someone hurt you. And we can forgive. Uh, this one is a bonus. Hallelujah. Amen. For for the gentlemen, there are certain guys uh, maybe you are about to get married. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get a name from the brothers? Can I get an amen from sisters? Amen. Hallelujah my sisters. Amen. Apostle usually gives this example you go and a guy comes and say eh, sister eh, I was praying. Please don't use this code. Hallelujah. But it started in prayer. Hallelujah. And after that eh, the conclusion is that i want you to be my wife when i am talk to the both of you you know what you are not you are not going to be my wife i want you to go to the bar and i want you to go to the bar and i want you to go to the bar and i want you to go to the bar and i want you to go to the bar and i want you to go to the bar and i want you to go things that people say behind the scene but uh, imagine me oh, the whole of me with that how oh, wow. <laughs> i don't know hallelujah amen and then uh, the brother uh, starts to commit hallelujah gamona i join us sele ko tut hallelujah ba mutlatsa hallelujah and then from there the ba mutlatsa And 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 hallelujah amen the brother starts to look nice uh, they even showed uh, they show him a shop where to buy roll ons hallelujah eh eh ba mo ruta le reka these cheap perfumes hallelujah so when the brother passes una le sweet smelling aroma hallelujah so eh uh, uh, the brother starts to con- uh, he continues hallelujah Amen. Is and he becomes a branch leader. Hallelujah. And then before you know it, the brother comes and gives he gives a testimony. Mm. I, I, I want to thank the Lord. He took me from the muddy clay. And put me on the king's highway. And when I came I had one pair. Of, of, of trousers. And then now The Lord, the Lord has done it. I'm an engineer. I'm working at Mercedes-Benz. 
And then sister was, Hallelujah, brother. Hey. And then when the brother says, No, talk yes. to my aunt. When, uh, because of that now, when you have got a vendetta to make sure that you discredit every lady that gets closer to the brother. Or no, don't go there. But you don't tell them that you went there for the second time and they said no. So, when you see the brother, you're always angry, man. Because God has moved him. And you don't forgive even now. We can't celebrate others. I'm telling you things that are happening in the house of the Lord. Uh, uh, when you hear uh, bless the Lord, it's anger, 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 anger. Hey. When they give a testimony, anger, anger. Hey. When they say, uh, can, you, can parents come uh, forward and you see young couples and you see a, a brother that you said no to, you are angry. Hallelujah. Hey. Can you look at your neighbor and say forgiveness? Forgiveness. Or learn to forgive. Learn to move on as well. Hallelujah. Jesus took away our sickness and pain. The book of Matthew 8, uh, 16 to 17 says, When evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word, and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit, as I was preparing, I was reminded of a testimony when we started with the branches. A testimony of healing. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, I was preparing for a branch. Uh, I was not working, so when I woke up, my mission was to pray for the branch meeting. Hallelujah. Amen. So I was in prayer. Yes, I was praying. Hey, I was attacked by a serious, painful headache. Uh, this headache has a, there's a genesis for it. Hallelujah. It's uh, something that happens in the family. Uh, I've got a brother who is somewhere around the world. He, uh, when we talk, also testify about the same issue and say, hey, listen, hey, when that one starts, you stop what you're doing. And I thought that was not enough. When I asked uh, my other siblings who at home, same story. But, Hallelujah. Amen. So, I was then preparing and I was like, no, man. Does it mean that I have to stop as well? Ah, I'm confronting this thing once and for all. I'm, like, I'm going to practice the scriptures. I get it says that by his stripes I'm healed. I prayed. I prayed and I prayed for a long period of time. And there started to be some signs that something is happening. Oh, I didn't stop. I said, no, 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 no. no I'm not me looking me. for tell, tell signs. I agree the word of God says that it, it heals. I want the pain to be gone. Brother, I'm telling you, I prayed up until I felt nothing at all. So, to cut the long story short, what happened that evening? When we were supposed to have the branch meeting, the landlord decided to chase us the same evening. Eh? I remember uh, the brethren were rubber cushioning in the flat. Uh, the landlord said, hey, out. During the time of the branch meeting. So there's no time to say we're going to look for a venue where nothing. I remember we went to the streets and had our branch in, uh, on the street of Sunnyside. Live. We had a branch meeting 
on the streets of Sunnyside. So after uh, uh, sharing the word of God, eh, I was worried, right? Eh, I wanted to make an altar call for healing because of the experience that happened. But then I was worried with how man are in the streets. Imagine uh, people are passing and you are praying, we are praying for people there in the streets. Okay. And then from there, by God's grace, we continued with the altar call. There was a lady who came and she was prayed for. It looked like we're praying. We were praying. And this other time, I'm surprised the same person is giving a testimony at church. She came, I think she had an asthma problem. That's why I want to give this testimony because we have to deal with the issue of asthma. And the lady came with whatever that the doctor had given her. To, as a proof that I don't need them anymore. And she was saying that God healed her. You know, when, when it was happening, it looked like it was a joke. Last testimony of healing. This year, Apostle, when he was praying for people, these people must come and testify, Pastor Michael. Apostle said, okay, uh, uh, just put your hands wherever that you are feeling the pain. Or if it's an area where you can't do it, uh, uh, just put your hands uh, on, on your belly. And then, after prayer, we, we went for a home visit after some time. So this young man is giving a testimony. And hey, listen, I, I followed the instruction that Apostle said. He said that he used to have a problem with his feet. That whenever, when he goes to sleep, they will just be hot. He, he could not sleep. Whenever he thought about sleeping, it was a problem. And after Apostle prayed uh, that prayer, he is completely healed. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking about people that you are going to see giving a testimony. I'm not talking about a story. Uh, I can quote many testimonies that happened in the Bible, but I'm using examples of people that you know. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Christ was crucified so that we also receive our healing. Hallelujah. Amen. Last one and I close because of time. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus on the cross was made a curse that we might receive a blessing. The book of Deuteronomy 3 verse 13 to 14. It says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Galatians 3, verse 13. To 12. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, it's nice to talk about Resurrection Sunday. And have hashtags. A hashtag. Resurrection Sunday. It's nice. And it can trend. But it's possible to hashtag about it and not receive the power of resurrection. We are the Christians. So we must not talk about resurrection only. There must be a testimony of the power of resurrection. And one of the issues that Jesus was dealing with at the cross was the issue of curses. Many of us have heard it that uh, this is from the family. 
or yeah, no in this family this is the type of disease that we have or there are certain patterns that you can see in the family do you know that there are people who have patterns of divorce in their lineage I, 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 I don't want to go into details, but I attended a meeting where they were praying for someone. They were casting out, a, 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 it was an altar of the same thing. Of someone who struggles with divorce because it's a chain. Mm-hmm. And someone needs to see it and cut it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm raising these things because Sometimes we talk about the power of resurrection and yet normalize things that are abnormal. There are people who have a mental and emotional breakdown. It doesn't matter where they are in life. Sometimes we even feel like the enemy allows them to go high so that when he pulls the red carpet, everybody can see their fall. And we have normalized it. We want to rationalize it. There are people who have chronic illnesses and now we have accepted that it, it is like that. We no longer have faith, but we are Christians. When they make an altar call and you have issues, you no longer come. You can come when they are praying for a job, but you have a, a sickness that you have accepted that this is how it is. We have accepted the explanations from the doctors. Repeated miscarriages. Something that we have accepted. Hallelujah. Amen. I gave a test. I, I went and saw Apostle about something that happened last year. Where something was always reoccurring in the family. A fight when a child is about to be born. And when I asked, I realized that hey, it's a trend when you talk to those who came before you, they will tell you at birth, this one lost a child. When you go back to the previous generation, this one lost a child. And I came and said, Apostle, please pray for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we normalize it when they explain these things to us. Financial insufficiency. Where you see poverty is a curse here. Have you ever seen a family where people go to school and they are still poor as well? Where they work, but you still see poverty everywhere. Uh, the enemy uses a devourer maybe of alcohol or whatever that he uses to make sure that he takes everything from there. Or people who are accident prone. There's a trend, there's a pattern. Or, uh, if you check this one, right, because of one, two, three, and we've accepted it. Or unnatural deaths. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, I'm here to tell you that the resurrection Sunday or the power of the resurrection was to set us free from all these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we're going to pray. But I, 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 I want to pray with you this morning. If you are saying that, I hear you are talking about the resurrection Sunday. That Christ was an exchange for us. For our sins. But I have never personally accepted him as, as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to submit to you that this Resurrection Sunday is the best day for you to give your life to Christ. So I want to invite you if you are that person. 
And you are saying that, you know what, I know in my heart that I am not born again. Or I have not accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to invite you with all eyes closed and all our heads bowed. If you are that person, I want to encourage you to not be afraid, to not be ashamed, but to just lift up your hand wherever you are and will pray with you. If you are here and saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. And be my Savior. If you are that person, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand wherever you, and then we'll just pray with you. God bless you, my sister. I see your hand. God bless you. Say, I see your hand. Hands are going up. If you are here and you know in your heart that I have not made that decision, I want to encourage you to not be ashamed because of other people who have made the decision. We're not going to ask you to say anything. We're just just going to pray with you. So if you are that person, I want you to lift up your hand and we'll pray with you. If you are saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Listen, it doesn't matter how old you are. It's about your life. And if you make that decision this morning, we'll pray with you. God bless you, young man. I see your hand. Are you going to allow us to leave you behind? God bless you. I see you, my brother. Brethren, this is a matter of life and death. We, this service is for you. Jesus Christ knew that you were going to come to this meeting today. If there's a debate in your heart on whether or not you should lift up your hand, listen. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, saying that lift up your hand. I'm going to make a last call. If you want to receive Jesus Christ, you can lift up your hand wherever you are and I will pray with you. This This is my last call. God bless you. I see you, my brother. This is my last call. God bless you, my sister. This is my last call. Mother's room. This is my last call. This is a met. God bless you, my sister. This is the last call. Brethren, it's a matter of life and death. You must be sure if you are born again. If there's a debate, it shows that the matter is not settled. You can join those who have lifted up their hands and will pray with you as well. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I'm going to ask those who have lifted up their hands to take the next step of faith and just come and stand here at the altar. We're just going to pray with you. We're not going to ask you to say anything. It's just a prayer of salvation. Come on, church. Let's Amen. give them a round of applause. Let's give them a round of applause. Let's give them a round of applause. Hallelujah. Even if you have not lifted up your hand, you can join them. Let's if you want to make the same decision. Hallelujah, church. Let's celebrate them. They are making a life-changing decision. Let's continue to clap for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to congratulate you for making a very important decision in your life. I am just going to ask you to lift up your hands and we are going to pray. It's a prayer of salvation. You can lift up both of your hands. I'm just going to ask you to repeat after me as we're making this prayer. Come on, church. Can we also join them as we're making their prayer of salvation? Can we all say, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I thank you that you love me and have a wonderful plan for my life. This day, the Resurrection Sunday, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and needed a Savior. Lord Jesus, Forgive me from all the sins that I've committed. Cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Accept me as your child in the kingdom of God. For you said that if I speak with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
I am born again. I am a child of God. Satan, you have no power over me. I divorce you. I cut all the ties that I have with you. I am born again. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Come on church, let's give them a round of applause.